three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you guys are having a great start to your week. So, as you guys know, uh, it is Monday the 13th. So, the Oscar nominations uh, were officially released today. So, I'm going to go through uh, each uh, couple categories. Probably go through most of them, if not all. And just kind of give my quick uh, thoughts, because I uh, <laughs> I have some thoughts about uh, about this year's nominations. So let's just start straight away with uh, perf- uh, Best Actor. So we got Antonio Banderas in, uh, in Pain and Glory. We got Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Got Adam Driver in Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix in Joker. Jonathan Price in The Two Popes. So uh, I'm going to be honest, guys. I've seen Pain and Glory. I've seen The Two Popes. Uh, by the way, before the Oscars on February 9th, we will have reviews up for all of the Best Picture nominees. I think we're more than halfway there already, but a lot of films to still watch <laughs> before uh, we do our best of here in a couple weeks. But if if I'm the Academy, I swap out uh, Jonathan Price and The Two Popes and Antonio Banderas and Pain and Glory. I swapped him out for Christian Bale and Ford v. Ferrari because I thought he was incredible in that, as well as swapping out Jonathan Price for Eddie Murphy in Dolomite Is My Name. Uh, the absolute raw charisma that Eddie Murphy brought to Dolomite Is My Name I thought was incredible. And Christian Bale, that as Ken Miles, that might be his best role since The Fighter for me. I thought Christian Bale was incredible in that. Um, haven't reviewed Plain Glory, haven't reviewed Two Popes, probably will review at least one of those before, um, uh, before we go, uh, we get to our best of and before the Oscars come out, but yeah, I, I, I just, I, I saw those and I went, huh, I don't like that. Also, you can make a case for, uh, Teron Edgerton, uh, for Rocketman, he just won the Golden Globe, and I gotta, I, I gotta say this, guys, um, Bohemian Rhapsody, I think Rami Malek is an incredible actor. I thought he gave a great performance. But the thing I'm going to always point to, the fact is, A, so much of that movie is inaccurate. Like, like almost a disturbing amount of things in the Bohemian Rhapsody are inaccurate. And two, I'm sorry, did Rami Malek do all, uh, all of his own singing? No, actually he did none of his own singing. So I think about someone like Taron Edgerton, who for me captured the essence of Elton John better then Remy Malk did uh, um, Freddie Mercury. And the fact that he did his own, all of his own singing. And to the depths that they explored Elton John's psyche. I, I, I just, I, I really saw it today and I went, really? Not even Tehran? So, I, yeah, I, I really thought they got that. I thought they messed up uh, messed up pretty big there, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, okay. Pardon me. Moving on to performance by an actor in supporting role. We got Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Anthony Hopkins in The Two Popes, Al Pacino in The Irishman, Joe Pesci in The Irishman, and Brad Pitt in Once, a Time, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So this breaks one of my rules that I just personally have. I hate to see anyone in acting nominated uh, twice for the same film. It bothers the hell out of me. It's always been a peeve, and... If I'm picking between Pacino and Joe Pesci, I gotta go Joe Pesci because I, a because I don't know if Joe Pesci will have another chance to to win a goal, uh, an Oscar, which I know how fucking grim that just sounded, but let's be honest, Joe Pesci's up there. Uh, Al Pacino, I thought he was great at Jimmy Hoffa, but I thought Pesci was better uh, for me. So, um, so I, I I would I would just I, I would drop one of them. And if I'm dropping anyone as far as for, uh, like, who I would slide in, um, I'm blanking on his name right now. Oh, my God, that's so bad. But uh, um, uh, the kid from Jojo Rabbit, and I'm, uh, I know it's Roman uh, something, but I, I really was, I, I was really kind of disappointed for him. I, I know it's harder for, you know, younger actors to go ahead and get, 
I recognize Roman Griffin Davis. There we go. I thought he was absolutely amazing as JoJo, and uh, I that film was one of my favorite films in the last couple years. I think uh, Taika is just a brilliant director. Um, he didn't get a nomination, which, but I thought Roman Griffin Davis for this really being his first big role. I thought he knocked it out of the park, showing that um, that scary sort of. Uh, devotion to being a Nazi, but being just a dumb kid who just wants to fit in. I, I just thought his story was so sweet, and yeah, I I, I was really irritated that he uh, that he didn't get uh, that he didn't get a, a nomination here. I, I would knock out Joe Pesci and I would put him in. So uh, there's that. Uh, moving on to performance by leading actress, got C- uh, Cynthia or- uh, Orivo in for Harriet. Got Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story. Uh, Cerise Ronan in Little uh, Little Woman, uh, Charlie Theron in Bombshell, Renee Zellweger in, in Judy. Okay, so first off, Marriage Story is amazing. I think Scarlett Johansson's got it here. If I'm being uh, completely honest, uh, Cynthia or Arriva. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I watched Harriet. I think it's a good movie. I think her performance is good. I don't think it's Oscar worthy. I, I really don't. I remember sitting there kind of going, man, I, I want to love this more. And I just remember thinking it was good, not great. And if since we're talking about black actress, what I would have done personally here, uh, this category is actually the one so far I have the least problem, the least issues with. I would have swapped out Cynthia uh, Arrivo, put Lupita in there for us. She played, a, she played two roles for fuck's sake, and she's amazing in both of them. Or, if you don't want to go Lupita, because I know the, the Academy has a thing against horror for whatever reason, uh, put all uh, put Aquafina in there. I think you could put her in for Hustlers or put her in for The Farewell. I thought she was absolutely incredible in The Farewell. And if we're talking about The Farewell in general, uh, one thing we have to point out is the fact that um, if, if uh, Aquafina gets a nomination, she's the first woman she would have been the first asian american woman since the awards started in 92 years of them doing the academy awards that would have gotten a best actress nomination i think that's insane and and for how great her performance was i I think she deserves something here uh she won the golden globe it's really confusing to me how i mean obviously the golden globes are not perfect but it's really weird to see her get so much praise and just not I don't know. For her, I was really surprised she didn't uh, she didn't get a nomination here. Uh, moving on to uh, performance by an actress in supporting role. Um, Laura Dern in Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson in Jojo Rabbit, uh, uh, Florence Pugh in uh, Little Women, Margot Robbie in Bombshell, Kathy Bates in Richard Jewell. I haven't seen Richard Jewell, and, uh, so that's the one movie out of these I have not seen as far as this category. I gotta say right now though, guys, I throw in uh, I throw in either I, I throw in J Lo right here. I I really thought Jennifer Lopez was incredible in uh, in uh, in Hustlers, and I uh, I you know I was gonna say I get it, but you know what? I'll be honest, I don't get it because uh, look, The Irishman. For as much as some people will adore that film. Uh, I we will have a review up for it here before the the, the Oscars, but uh, I will say my thoughts on it. I, I will. Say, you can probably guess from kind of leaning though. But uh, for as much as we glorify violence, you know, and I I'm gonna call it what it is. Martin Scorsese. I know he's going back to the mob. Well, I mean, he makes gangster films. I get that. But for as much shit as he talked about Marvel about being the same exact thing, I'm sorry. I thought this was a lesser version of something like The Departed, or something like Goodfellas, it's like, okay, I've, you know, I've seen you do this better, you do this better, and so, the fact that, um, I I just, it's, it's frustrating in that aspect, so, for me here, I swap out Kathy Bates, I put in J-Lo, and and my, my point about the, my point about the mom movies to be, as my phone, as my phone randomly goes off, uh, (laughs) My my point about the whole about uh, Scorsese and his mob films is why is violence so glorified and yet something like sex is so like oh god you can't have that it's really quite confusing to me and yes the movies about stripping okay uh, I'm sorry um, 
Leo got nominated. You think Leo hasn't seen a stripper too? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. So it was really kind of one of the things I kind of threw my hands up and went, huh? And I just rewatched Hustlers a couple weeks ago, and I, I think the film's fucking brilliant. So the fact that J Lo got snubbed, uh, I thought it was pretty dumb. Uh, moving on to animated film of the year: How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, I Lost My Body, Klaus, Missing Link, Toy Story Four. So first off, I'd like to say. I am so happy Frozen 2 did not get nominated because I do not understand why people love those movies. I, I, I get why, because, I mean, Princess and Powers, and it's it's like an X-Men movie for girls. Like, fine, <laughs> fine. But I, I, I sit there and I watch and I just go, I, I don't get it. It's like it's like when I saw The Good Dinosaur and I went, all right, this is cute, but it's not, I'm not going to remember this movie, you know, a year from now. Uh, I, I just don't get it. So... Out of these movies, I just I watched Klaus uh, um, around Christmas time. I enjoyed the hell of it. I think it's an absolutely gr- just beautiful, brilliant film. I fully admit that I am partial here. I want How to Train Your Dragon in the World to win because it did make me cry. And you guys know if a movie makes me cry, I I, I almost feel like almost like like allegiance to it. Plus, I think Toothless is one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. And the first time I saw him, I actually went, oh, so I, yeah. So I am pulling for How to Train Your Dragon in the Hidden World. I think this is one of the stronger categories, actually, um, that, uh, that uh, is out there for Oscars. So if, I love, I, I love Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4 made me cry, too. But I, I gotta be honest, guys, Disney and Pixar win this category so much. I was so happy when Into the Spider-Verse won last year, because uh, it fucking deserved to win, too. But let's give it to someone else. Toy Story 4, again, great film, but for me, How to Train a Dragon in the Hidden World, or Klaus, or Missing Link, or H- I Lost My Body, because I, I enjoyed that one, too. Uh, pretty much, I just don't want Toy Story to win. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I just I don't want it to win. So, uh, moving on. Uh, achievements in Cinematography. Uh, Irishman. Uh, Joker. The Lighthouse, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, here's the thing. I think every film in this uh, of, in this category has a right to win with the exception of Joker. I think the cinematography is good, but I think that there are other aspects of it that you can praise more than the cinematography. For me, uh, I thought The Lighthouse, the way it's shot, I thought it's just so fucking beautiful. And it puts you in the mood. It makes you feel like you're there. So for me, it goes to Lighthouse, then it goes Once Upon a Time. Actually, no, it goes Lighthouse, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Irishman, then Joker for me. Uh, moving on to costume design uh, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, moving, on, uh, m- moving on real quick on this, uh, uh, Jacqueline Duran, I want to give her props. Uh, yeah, she should win because the way the costumes in Little Women are fucking excellent. I, I, it, it's just, it's crazy to just think about how well done the costume design is in that movie uh for me second it would go jojo rabbit then i would go joker then irishman then once upon a time hollywood for me uh movie okay here's where we get to a category i have a huge problem with all right you know i'm gonna take a sip of my beer first because i because i'm gonna golf on a long rented long winded rant so pardon me There we go. Okay, here we go. Martin Scorsese for The Irishman, Todd Phillips for Joker, Sam Mendes for 1917, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Bong uh, Bong John Ho for Parasite. Okay, so I watched Parasite recently. Again, I'm going to say my thoughts on that. I'm going to tell you guys right now, uh, Todd Phillips does not deserve Best Director nomination because, one... I do not. I, I, this is a control, uh, this is a total conspiracy theory, but I stand by it. I don't think he directed it. I think Martin Scorsese did more than he will ever tell us. I, I truly believe that. Uh, two, uh, Greta Gerwig directed Little Women. Greta Gerwig did such a good job directing Little Women. People forgot there was another version of Little Women that came out in 2018 that was fucking horrible. But because of her steady hand, literally behind the camera. The film, the way it's shot, it's just, it's like a, it, you remember those All-American Girls books? Like those, like, those ones set back in the day? Yeah, um, 
it's like those. It's like a live action version of those. I mean that as a compliment. Just the way everything is shot, the way the the the, the pastures and everything look, the costumes, the way that they even shoot the dance sequences. You're like, oh my god, this woman just has this eye for film that I'll be honest, I find it fucking inspiring so when i saw she didn't get a nomination first off i'll be honest guys i wasn't surprised because i had a feeling she wouldn't get one and it really irked me that uh that she didn't so she also did lady bird and if you guys have listened to the podcast you know i fucking love lady bird i think that is just a I'm a sucker for those coming of age films. I think Lady Bird is excellent. I might watch Lady Bird tonight, actually, now I'm talking about it. But the fact is, while Todd, Todd Phillips does deserve credit to an extent, again, I think, about Joker, uh, yeah, Greta Gerwig did a better job with this. And she, if she had gotten nominated, she would have been the first woman in Oscars history to be nominated twice for Best Director. And I'm sorry, guys, 92 years, you're really telling me that a woman can't get nominated twice for Best Director. Like, I'm not going to go off on the whole, like, you know, Oscars to White thing. But at some point, guys, I mean, they just made this big push to go ahead and make the Oscars, uh, the, the the voters more diverse and everything. It's like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, it's just, it, it it's really frustrating when I think someone like her, who clearly has put in the work, is just not getting acknowledged at all, I mean, it, yeah, so, yeah, that really irked me, moving on to documentary, I actually have no problem with these, for me, I'm gonna go American Factory, uh, but it's uh, American Factory, The Cave, The Edge of Democracy, For Sama, and Honeyland, I saw uh, The Cave, American Factory, The Edge of Democracy, and For Sama, I'm gonna go American Factory, I actually have no, uh, no, uh, uh, problems with that one, so, this is where we get into stuff more than I just, you know, the the, uh, the other films. I, I have not seen any documentary shorts, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip past that one. For film editing, I think it's uh you've got Ford v Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Parasite. For me, it's Ford v Ferrari. Just the uh, the way the action is shot in that, it's so incredibly well done. Um, I'm going to move on here. I'm going to throw out two more here. Achievement in Written uh, Music, for, uh, Original Score. So I'm going to butcher her name. Uh, Hildur uh, Guana, Guana... Oh, my God. I'm, <laughs> I'm so screwing up her name. Uh, Hildur Guana Daughter. I'm going to go with that. Um, so you got her, who, and who won the Golden Globe, by the way. Um, you've got uh, Little Women up for that. Marriage Story, 1917. And, of course, John Williams for Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Thomas Newman for 1917. Randy Newman for Marriage Story. And uh, Andre Desplat uh, for Little Women. So, for me, here's where it's going to be hard for me. Because I just saw 1917. If you have not listened to a review that is up right now, I think 1917 is fucking excellent. Uh, I love John Williams. I think he's one of the best composers ever. And then, you know, uh, Randy Newman, who I, you hear Randy Newman and Mary's story, you go, really? That would work? And it works so freaking well. So I, I almost lean towards him because of the surprise of how well I thought his music worked in the film. I wouldn't be surprised if Joker, if uh, Hildur goes ahead and repeats her win here. And I wouldn't have a problem with that. I actually thought the uh, score in Joker was, uh, was pristine, honestly. So, all right, continuing on. Uh, original song, uh, I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away, uh, for Toy Story, I'm Gonna Love Me Again, for Rocket Man, uh, I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough, wait, wait, is this the, I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough, is this, is this that Christian movie with the dumb kid who falls through the ice, really, that got a, okay, you know what, cool, don't want that to win, because I saw Breakthrough, Breakthrough is stupid, so, alright, cool, don't want that to win, into the Unknown from Frozen 2, that is a that is a great song. And Stand Up by Harriet, that is actually a really great song. Okay, um, uh, because Rocket Man is pretty much getting shot and everything else, I want Elton John to win, because I love Elton John, and he is fucking valuable. So, yeah, I'm going for Rocket Man. Uh, I'll tell you right now, if fucking I'm standing with you from Breakthrough wins, I'm going to be really pissed off. I do not want that. I'm like, oh, that's so irritating. That's nominated. Um, if you've seen Breakthrough, it's just, it's... It's not great, but whatever. Okay, on to the big one. I think I'm going to stop here as far as my uh, my thoughts. Uh, so, 
Film of the year. And this is where I'm going to go off a little bit. So, Ford v. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Okay, so, one, I do not think <laughs> that Joker's going to win. I'm just throwing that out there right now. I, yeah, I don't think Joker's winning. I don't think The Irishman man is winning. I personally think 1917 is going to win because Sam Mendes, in my opinion, again, if you've listened to the review, you know this, my thoughts, but I think he directed the best film of his career. I think that the way he shoots it as one shot is incredibly ambitious. It's artistic. And if I was teaching a film class, it would be on the first things I would go ahead and show people is 1917. If not the first movie, I would show people. I think the film's fucking excellent. Uh, after 1917, I'd probably I'd go Marriage Story because I love Marriage Story, but I like 1917. I think a little more, and then I'd go Jojo Rabbit because I love Jojo Rabbit. Here's the thing about Joker, guys, and, and, and I've I've gotten to more arguments than I care to count about this movie. So I'm gonna break it down like this: Joker got 11 nominations uh, for uh, got 11 Oscar nominations. Um, let's be real, guys. Um, did really anyone think, A, this would go ahead and be this, uh, be this, uh, successful, one, uh, two, I'm gonna be honest, guys, two, Joaquin Phoenix, he might win the Oscar, it, it's, it's possible, it, it's, the, Vegas has him as, like, the odds-on favorite, favorite, I still think Adam Driver's gonna win, but here's the thing, guys, I'm gonna be real honest with you guys, I, I have had, so many arguments about Joker and about DC films in gen general. And I think I've been fair with DC. I, I think I've been one of the first person to sing their praises when they do something right. I gave Joker a B plus when I saw it. I stand by the B plus. I have issues with Joker, but considering it's a film that I thought would just flat out suck, it's it's impressive that it is done as not only as well as it did, making over a billion dollars, but the fact that I enjoy it as much as I do. Here's the thing about uh, about this movie, guys. Uh, first off, it owes a great debt. Not to Dark Knight, but to Black Panther. Because, bottom line, Dark Knight was one of those Nolan movies. So people were kind of like, alright, we can nominate this, no big deal. Black Panther really kicked in the door for this film. And... You can yell and scream and go, that's not true. It is true, because, I'm sorry, what's the first comic book movie to be nominated for Best Picture? That would be Black Panther, and that would be last year. So that's number one. Number two, and more importantly, uh, guys, I'm going to be real with you. Between the last 20 minutes of this film, and I'm going to say the same thing about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No, this is, neither one of these deserves to win. Joker doesn't deserve to win. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood doesn't deserve to win. Um, and here's the other thing, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real straight with you. Uh, while I do not have a bias against DC, and I will scream that to the cows come home, I'm going to say this, guys. I remember when Black Panther got its uh, Oscar nominations, including Best Picture. The amount of people I had y message me, text me, go, come on, Hunter, you know it doesn't deserve that those nominations. Come on. You know Black Panther was the best movie of the year. Come on, Hunter. The amount... I couldn't even enjoy it for a fucking day before I had people raining on my parade for something that I fucking love. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, uh, I'm sorry, the Joker has been around for how long? We've seen him in Batman 89. We've seen him in Batman animated series. We've seen him in the Arkham games. We've seen him in... Uh, oh my god. Uh, Dark Knight, obviously. I'm sorry, you see his character all the time. How often do we see a black character in power get nominated for anything? And this whole, there's a reason why this whole Oscars to white thing is trending on Twitter right now. Now, am I saying that all the Oscars this year are a victim of that? No, because like I said, not going to go off a whole rant about it. But the fact I, like, th the fact black folks could even get a goddamn day <laughs> to enjoy the fact that a movie that represents us was nominated for the awards it was nominated for, fair or not, the fact we couldn't even fucking enjoy that, and people freaking out about this clown, a clown might I add, that a lot of people 
or even very hesitant, like myself, to go, oh, man, I don't know if this is going to work. Fuck, DC was so hesitant to go ahead and do this. They had people help them out. They went ahead and had another uh, company go ahead and uh, produce the film with them. So they didn't have to cover the full budget. So I don't want to hear this crap about, oh, yeah, DC knew it was going to go ahead and be a hit. No, you didn't. You had no fucking idea it was going to be a hit. So that whole bullshit, save it. Don't want to hear it. So bottom line, if Walking Phoenix wins for Best Actor, I'll tell you right now, Walking's performance is fucking pristine. If he he deserves a nomination, if not to win. So if he wins, I have no problem with that. Outside of that, I'll be honest, guys, I don't want the film to win anything. P- point plain and simple. Not because, again, of my anger about Black Panther, not just because of that. But to be honest, guys, I think there are better films that came out this year that are not being uh, that are not being uh, not uh, talked about enough, unfortunately. So I don't think it deserves to win. But uh, I digress. <laughs> so. I'll go over one more award just because I love the uh, I, I love the short best animated short f- uh, film nominees uh, movie called a uh, little uh, short called Hair Love, and it's about this uh, uh, black uh, black father and his daughter, and it is just one of the sweetest, um, one of the sweetest just adorable things I've ever seen, and it it made me cry. I, I won't even lie, it, it made me tear up just uh, being black scene the way. It, uh, the way it was just done, it, I think it's just beautiful. I don't even want to talk about it and give anything away. So, but it's just it's so sweet. All right, I'm gonna go over these last two adapted screenplay nominees. I'm a little confused why Joker is adapted screenplay and not original screenplay. And, and the only reason I say that I know it's an established character, obviously, but it's not. This isn't based really on a specific arc in in DC. So I'm a little confused why it's not original screenplay instead of adapted so that's a little weird but whatever um okay so got the irishman by steve uh, uh zalan uh, zalian uh, jojo rabbit by taika watiti joker by todd phillips and scott silver little women by greta gerwig and the two popes by anthony Mc- uh, mccartan uh joe <sighs> i gotta go jojo rabbit because taika not getting uh not getting a uh, best director nomination is a bummer um it, it's a real bummer, so I I, I, I want him to win. I, I, I really want him to win, uh, to win there. Uh, if not him, uh, Greta Gerwig, because, again, she got, I think she got screwed here this year, so I would be happy if she won, to, to, to throw that out there. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully one of them wins. And then getting the original screenplay, last but not least, uh, Knives Out by Ryan Johnson, which is a fucking trip to think about how uh, much he was just getting like yelled at for Last Jedi, and then he makes a Knives Out, which is a great movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Uh, Marriage Story, Story by Noah uh, Bombach, 1917 by Sam Mendes and Christy Wilson Carnes, who's writing uh, the new, uh, the, the, the new um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, she actually wrote the new Edgar Wright film, which I'm comes out this year, and I'm really excited to see him kind of go more, uh, a little more in the maybe traditional horror. So I'm excited for that. Once upon a time by uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood by Quentin Tarantino, of course, and Parasite by uh, Bong Joon Ho, and then Han Jin Wan, and the story was by uh, Bong uh, Bong Joon Ho. I'm gonna go. Oh God, where would I go here? I'm gonna go Marriage Story because I this won't win Best Picture, but I think Marriage Story is gonna do very well for Netflix here. So I'm gonna go Marriage Story here. But uh, guys, t- uh, guys and girls, talk to me here. What do you think about the Oscar nominees? Um, another nominee uh, or another snub I didn't even mention. Uh, we haven't reviewed it yet, but I thought Uncut Gems. I thought Am Sandler was great. Uh, I, I, I it's frustrating because I don't know who I would knock out for Best Actor, outside of the people I mentioned, but I, I wouldn't replace Adam Sandler's performance over Christian Bale's or over uh, Teron Edgerton. So, it's tough, because Adam Sandler had a... I think this performance, if this happens next year, I think we're having a better... Uh, or this year, I think we're having a different conversation, and he could be... He'd be a strong contender, but this was just not the year to have that performance, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, but so guys, talk to me. What did you think about the Oscar nominations? 
who got snubbed, that means you're mad. Who got nominated that you're pissed off about? Talk to me. Let me know you thought about what I think about this. I, I look forward to your letters. But uh, you can go ahead and like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can go ahead and follow Colin on Twitter at The Real O'Neill. And you can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. And you can go ahead and find us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Podbean, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify at The Real Pineapple. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll have reviews up this week for uh, Doolittle, God help me. And we'll have a review up as well for Bad of Boys for Life, which I am so excited about. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Uh, we do this for you guys. I hope you guys have a great start to your week, and we'll talk to you this weekend. Have a great one, guys. Peace.